Hi everybody, happy Friday. We are coming to you live this afternoon from the Clinical Research Unit here at VCU Medical Center. Um, and we're here because Monday is International Clinical Trials Day. Um, and what better time to give you all a behind the scenes tour of our clinical research unit that's on the eighth floor of North Hospital at VCU Medical Center. So we are lucky today to be joined by the Clinical Research Unit Medical Director, Dr. Antonio Vase, and the Nurse Manager, uh, Joan, Joni Greer. Hi, how are you? Welcome um, on the unit. Yeah, welcome yeah. <laughs> to our so home. We're gonna be giving you um, a, a first person look at what it's like to volunteer to clinic, in a clinical trial here at the Clinical Research Unit. So, um, Dr. Bate, can you start by telling us just what is it that you do here? Yeah, so we do clinical research here. This is our unit, part of the CCTR, the Wright Center. And here we see patients, volunteers, or patients with different kind of diseases that are part of a study. And part of being part of a study means they're undergoing some testing, some specialized testing often, and being assessed and uh, see how it correlates with their disease. Or if they're a healthy volunteer, giving them a test for a new drug. Mm -hmm. And then we have clinical trials, where it is that we treat patients with different treatments and uh, evaluate the response of the treatment. So you don't have, so you can be a healthy volunteer and still participate in clinical trials, right? Absolutely. So those are what we refer to as phase one clinical trials, where healthy volunteers help us identify new strategies, new treatments. They're tested in volunteers first. They're obviously uh, vouched by uh, our clinical research team and by our IRB, so they're very safe. And they allow us to identify what the dosage of the drug needs to be uh, in different people, you know, different weights, different uh, uh, ethnicity, um, and males and females. And so this is a very useful um, group of people for this uh, for this treatment. Excellent. Um, and of course, with Monday coming up, to it's going to be International Clinical Trials Day, which is a day when people around the world recognize the value that clinical research really brings to the uh, enhanced delivery of healthcare. Um, all medical devices and treatments that we use today were first uh, tested with clinical trials. So um, clinical research is super important to people around the world and at VCU Health we make it a priority and that's why we're here today. So um, Joni, can you kick us off with uh, sure. what the patient can expect when they yeah. arrive here? So our unit is somewhat of a hybrid because we have all different types of research and um, technology as well as equipment and teams here. So we're a hybrid approach. So you enter our unit and you get registered in our, and wait in our waiting room, but we also have, we have clinic rooms where you can have a clinic appointment. Uh, we have procedure rooms um, where you may have a procedure and that's like a regular hospital room mm -hmm. um, that you would spend some time in. We also have an infusion room where you can get um, medication um, over a period of several hours and we also have our built-in lab uh, where you can have all of your blood drawn and specimens collected. And then we have um, a very unique opportunity where we have a metabolic chamber and we'll visit the metabolic chamber. We're one of eight in the country that has this technology. So you'll get an inside view. Excellent. And well, it's not, I'm sorry, Anna, but it's not uncommon for a patient to go actually through the different stations here mm -hmm. because a, a clinical study is often complex and has both an assessment in the clinic visit but and more lab tests drawn or exercise testing or procedures done. Mm -hmm. So uh, many of our patients go through the different stations in this unit. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see all the technology. I'm sure our viewers are as well. So let's get started. All right. So let's go on down to our check-in. Then we can meet our registration um, person, Ernestine, always with a smile to greet our patients. About how many um, patients do you see coming through right here? In here? Um, it varies based on length of stay for the patients. A clinic day, we may have, um, you know, 10 to 20. If it's a long procedure day, we may have less than 10 because they're here for four, six, eight hours. Um, and some of our studies are 12 hours. So it kind of depends on the length of time um, to get the 
the testing done. And, and this unit is reserved for uh, individuals in clinical studies, so they don't have to uh, be uh, in line with other clinical participants of just you know normal clinical care. This is because being in a clinical study is kind of a service that you do to your community, and so we want to make sure that we take a, um, every opportunity to reduce your stay and you know fast forward and uh, take you uh, advantage of every time every time you devote for us to our community. Absolutely. So the front end is very quick moving through. We have three clinic rooms, um, seven exam rooms, and four procedure chairs. So things move pretty quickly to get your care started because even if it's an eight hour day, we want to make sure you're getting started and you're out of here in that time frame. And then as I said, this is Ernestine. She greets um, all of our patients and gets them registered into the system. So um, what can patients expect when they, when they get here and meet with you, Ernestine? Um, if they're used to me, a smiling face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my position as um, PAR, which is patient access rep, is to um, greet my patients and instruct them to the arrival process. Okay. And then, you know, um, yeah. it's to make sure that all the information that they've given me is accurate in the system so it can help um, the physicians to better take care of the patients mm -hmm. and for billing. Okay. So. Sounds pretty. And we, and we and we all the information we collect is maintained in a very confidential manner, yeah. and and so it's used only for the procedures that we indicate in our study, and so nobody should be concerned about loss, lack of uh, um, uh, confidentiality. Good to know. That's yep. reassuring. Right. And also, you have nice soothing music and plants. Yes, thank you. Very welcoming. Yes, thank yes. you. <laughs> yeah. So from here so they, we go to the check in. Check room. in, and so we have Jacob. Um, who is the nurse who's in check-in today. He can tell you a little bit about the process of checking in. So once you arrive in here, you'll have a seat and I'll assess your vital signs, maybe get a temperature, a waist circumference. Right over here, there's a, a scale and height. Uh, those are the basic assessments that we do to start most clinical uh, visits. Okay, so are the uh, assessments that you, that you do, it sounds very similar to what someone might expect at a normal doctor's visit. Is that is that pretty accurate? That's correct. This yeah. is, um, we do a standard uh, vital sign and a quick few questions from every participant. Okay, cool. And we're very uh, lucky to have uh, an extremely uh, well-trained and skilled group of nurses here that on top of their clinical uh, tasks, they're also trained in the conduct of research. Mm -hmm. So they understand how important and uh, delicate is the data recording, data keeping, and communication, and following protocols. And so all the nursing staff gets trained on each individual protocol. And so the nursing staff you have on this unit is specialized in clinical research. It is, it is. Mm -hmm. they are are also skilled in the clinical care mm -hmm. and sometimes they participate in clinical care of other floors but they are specialized for clinical research. That's um, interesting. Is it like a certificate or how? Um, it's multiple it... training courses that they have to yeah. do and maintain over time. Cool. Yeah. So um, I can talk a little yeah. bit. Oh yeah, that. please do. Yeah. So um, all of our um, nurses on staff um, participate in complete um, city training as well as good clinical practice um, and that's an online based education um, that is good for two years and then they renew it and then we have in services on all of our protocols prior to having our first patient um, and that would be the training would be from the um, investigator or part of the study team so that way we can have an opportunity to learn about the study ask questions before the first patient arrives very so, thorough. Yes. Sounds. <laughs> and then, um, so then from check-in, then Jacob would then take the patient over to the clinic and provide um, the study team with the information about their vital signs and all of that and, and place them in an exam room. So I can uh, show you, this is the one of the workrooms. This is Dr. Sterling. He's one of our researcher investigators. He's also the chief of hepatology. And so this would be one of the workrooms where he'd be uh, looking at the charts of the patients. And we'll meet again with Dr. Sterling in the one of the procedure rooms where we'll show us about one tool that we use for research, the fiber scan. Uh, from here, we can um, take a quick right and see what are the our clinic rooms. Uh, these are uh, look like uh, the majority of the clinic rooms in, uh, uh, in the hospital, they're um, in a private environment. There's a, in a, uh, an access to, uh, oh, oh, yes. And so, uh, Richard, you want to tell us about? Sure. 
Uh, one of your studies, how have you uh, had experience? You <laughs> sure. So we see patients here with a variety of liver diseases, uh, primarily those with fatty liver disease, those with HIV liver, di uh, HIV liver disease, as well as those with chronic viral hepatitis. Mm -hmm. um, so patients will come in. Um, a lot of times our visits here are part of routine practice, but we do collect data on them. They'll come in and they'll be seen by myself and one of my research coordinators for their uh, visits and we'll take care of them as we would with uh, any of our other patients here in the health system. Excellent. And so in addition to the liver disease um, population, there's anybody goes through these patient yes. rooms, correct? Yeah. Yes. So we have like we have uh, a patient today who was here for one of our studies. Mm -hmm. And so I think the, uh, the only difference compared to another clinic is that there may be additional time spent with the patient explaining all the details of the protocol, making sure that the patient understands fully what they're signing up for mm -hmm. in every process, and so we take a little bit more time. If it's okay with you, I can open the door, or? Uh-huh, yes. yeah, there's yeah. Hello. Sorry, guys. Hi. Okay. How are you? Good. So this is one of the, uh, an example, Dr. Van Tassel is one of the researchers here in the, uh, in the unit. He's an associate professor of uh, School of Pharmacy, and we're lucky enough to have one of our dearest patients coming in today and getting checked up. So they're going through the study protocol, making sure everything is uh, met and the patient stays safe. Cool. Great. And it's good to see that we have pharmacy, working with medicine. It sounds like this is a very interdisciplinary space. Would that be fair to say? Absolutely. Yeah. And as we mentioned earlier, the phase one trials, those are one some that the, the pharmacist is heavily involved because mm. it uh, allows, it's important to determine how the drugs are absorbed, metabolized. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Van Tess has led few of those uh, studies here. Uh, many of the other studies are called phase two trials, so mm -hmm. the early stage investigations into disease processes, looking at new treatments. Mm -hmm. And then we do some of the phase three studies, which are the larger multi-center trials where VCU is only one of the centers among the hundreds. And uh, patients can be involved in different levels of research. And what would you say is the aim of, why are there so many phases of clinical research you know I think there's four yes, phases of clinical absolutely. research what's what's the idea it's, behind it's that? mostly to keep a patient safe and, yeah. and proceed in a logic way so before the, the phase one starts which is in healthy volunteer there's a wealth of research ongoing in the preclinical arena right in, in mm -hmm. animals and cells to make sure everything is safe and then it started with a phase one mm -hmm. that involves healthy volunteers as we explained earlier and that's more to find the appropriate dosage of the drug how it's distributed how it's metabolized mm -hmm. and we work with the pharmacists uh, and uh, uh, pharmacologists biochemists and then phase two is when you're trying to prove that this specific treatment makes a difference in a disease mm -hmm. but it's a short-term study it's trying to look at that signal looking at what the dose that gives that signal best, and mm -hmm. then it's ready for more widespread testing, which is phase three. Mm -hmm. and that leads to approval of the drug by the FDA if the study is positive, mm -hmm. and then the drug becomes available to the users. You know, mm -hmm. The doctors can prescribe and patients can take the drug. Yeah. And after that is a phase four research where we are continuing to investigate how is the drug actually doing in real life? Right. Are there a problem with access or are there a problem with toxicity that wasn't identified? So the surveillance never ends. Yeah, yeah. continuously so, an iterative process of, uh, of, of, of testing and making sure the, the drug is as good as possible for the end for the patient. Definitely check mm -hmm. a lot of check and balances right. in there. And uh, and you know what we tell our patients is that uh, you know being in a clinical trial does not mean being at risk. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get uh, the care that they would get anyway, mm -hmm. plus some additional oversight. And uh, and so they're we're thankful to them that they volunteer their time. But yeah. they're also an opportunity to reach receive a new treatment that may not otherwise be available. Which is so exciting, and I think it's really cool that there's so much clinical research and, and discoveries and, and, and new drugs and devices happening here at BCU Medical Center. It's a great opportunity as a patient. Absolutely. Yeah. And BCU has a history of first in right. many, many fields and starting with the heart transplantation mm -hmm. where they were pioneer work. So we're excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah. One of the benefits of being an academic medical center. Um, let's continue our tour. Thank you, Thank you so much for okay. letting us purchase. So next, like I said, we do um, 
infusions here as well as procedures. So we're gonna go to the infusion room next and we can talk a little more about uh, to Jacob um, who works in the infusion room and can talk to you about um, that room. And what's great also, um, all of our rooms, most of them have windows, so it's a lot of natural light, which mm. is, um, most patients like that because you are in a hospital, but you still wanna kinda have nature and natural light. So um, Jacob can tell you a little bit about this room. It was um, just refurbished about two years ago or repurposed because um, we had an increased number of infusions and people needing infusions. And we wanted to have um, just a, a better, uh, more natural room with um, different things. So cool. This is a room that we use for uh, shorter stays that require infusion. Um, IV, uh, either magnesium, potassium, sometimes we do transfusion of blood products. Some of our patients are oncology patients and they're receiving therapies for that. Um, occasionally we might use it for different types of hydration and things like that. Um, you can expect a short stay, two to three hours at most. Sometimes a drug will take longer. We have vital signs and monitoring machines and then also uh, small TVs for enjoyment. So that way patients can watch a little TV. Most people, we have found they bring their own tablets. It seems like everyone has their own electronics now, mm -hmm. um, but we do have um, the television and also they have family members that can come um, and be with them um, while they're here for treatment. Try to balance these, you know, the safety with the comfort. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly, exactly. Because if you want to be here, you want to be in a comfy chair and we have snacks and all different things. Ooh, snacks! For our patients, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And so if we head down the, the hallway, um, these are our standard patient rooms uh, where they can um, have infusions in there or procedures, but we're gonna go and check out the metabolic chamber next. We're gonna have a chance to meet with uh, Dr. Chelly, who is the chief of endocrinology, and he's also the medical director of the metabolic chamber. As you will see, it's a very unique uh, room. And yes. So. And patients um, have short stays as well as overnight stays um, in our chamber. So we have Salvatore Carbone, who is um, a physician Hello. that has multiple studies in the chamber. Um, Dr. Chelly. Hello, how are you? And then um, Dr. Shen Shen Chen, who is the engineer who basically developed this room and made it happen for us. Cool. Can you guys show us the rooms and what, what, the, what they're for? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, well, so these two rooms are called a uh, whole room indirect calorimeter, or also called metabolic chamber. What it does is it measures the uh, minute by minute calories that you burn once you are housed in that uh, room and uh, when we close the door. So when you're inside uh, inside the room, um, your, uh, your breath will be trapped in this uh, room, and uh, we measure the uh, gas concentration difference inside this room. So basically the oxygen difference and the uh, carbon dioxide difference. Uh, um, then we can deduce uh, how much calories you burn by this. Uh, the gas analyzers are in another room. Uh, yeah. So if you are interested to see that. It's a lot of machinery. We're yes. going to check that out yes. for sure. Um, so Dr. Chani here uh, runs lots of the uh, human studies uh, using both chambers, uh, so he can tell you uh, a bit more on that front. So uh, the goal uh, of these chambers is measuring energy expenditure, and uh, uh, thanks to Dr. Chan's uh, changes in the algorithm uh, and uh, help in designing the chambers, uh, we managed to change uh, the uh, measurement from what would be a static uh, total amount of calories over 24 hours uh, or over six hours in a very dynamic, uh, um, dynamic uh, piece of equipment that allows us to measure literally minute by minute the changes in energy expenditure. Mm. So we can uh, measure uh, changes in energy expenditure as uh, we are administering uh, drugs. And in fact, uh, through these ports, uh, we can uh, perform, we can inject drugs, or at the same time, uh, we can draw blood uh, as uh, the individuals are recorded for their energy expenditure. Mm -hmm. We can measure the changes in energy expenditure as individuals are absorbing food or how, the, um, how prolonged fasting affects the energy expenditure. Mm -hmm. So in essence, we've been able to change uh, uh, 
to move these uh, uh, tools to a step forward for a more dynamic uh, recording of energy expenditure. Yeah, and VCU is only is one of only eight in the whole country. Oh, that, is that right? I, I think, think it's, it's a dozen, uh, but uh, oh, not, a dozen? That, not yeah. that many. Definitely no. not that many in the places. whole country, right? Yeah. 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 In contrast, I think it's about uh, twenty to thirty ones. So. Oh, yeah, in the entire U.S. So. Yeah. yeah, we're we're very lucky to have it. Yeah, yeah it sounds yeah. like it. Yeah. Um, and and Doctor or and Salvador, you you conduct some clinical research here, correct? Yes, yes, we do. We do. Mm -hmm. We're doing. Uh, I'm the nutritionist here in the group. So the studies that we do is uh, looking at the effect of different kind of diets. And one of the studies that we're doing is trying to look at the effect of. Um, healthy fats, sort of a Mediterranean kind of diet, mm -hmm. uh, on uh, uh, energy expenditure. So, can a diet affect the number of calories that people burn every day? Right. And yeah. like Dr. Charlie was mentioning, also, can we make this patient's metabolism work better mm -hmm. with dietary intervention, with uh, some pharmacologic intervention? And so, we to do that, we do some. Uh, we have a patients or even healthy volunteers mm -hmm. uh, staying in the chamber, spending overnight in the chamber, and so we can measure their energy expenditure for several hours. Uh -huh. uh, and we typically do before we start the intervention and at the end of the intervention, okay. so that we can see whether our uh, diet or f or drug actually uh, made a, a, a change, possibly right. an improvement. Right, uh, right. Measuring the baseline. A baseline, and, and after mm -hmm. four weeks or twelve weeks, depending on or one year, depends on the duration of the intervention. Great. We're also moving uh, toward uh, patient studies. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dr. Cribone uh, and uh, Dr. Sidiki are working in uh, uh, patients' population, so individuals with congestive heart failure uh, or individuals uh, with uh, uh, post-transplant uh, steatohepatitis. Mm -hmm. We also uh, just got a new study on uh, uh, patients with cystic fibrosis uh, on nutrition support. Mm -hmm. So this is a, it's just to give an idea of the breadth and scope, so we're going from individuals with a very significant disease burden all the way down to study how uh, playing violin affects uh, changes in energy expenditure and uh, how good or bad we are in playing violin can affect uh, this. Is that a real study happening Absolutely. here? That's, that's we call it chamber music. It's kind of chamber a music. Of shake. Okay. But yes. Yeah. So the idea is uh, is seeing how individuals uh, are uh, challenged uh, with a, a pretty intense uh, mind-body uh, coordination task. Right. And uh, uh, in essence, violin playing it's uh, it's for us is a proxy of what uh, our surgeons. Uh, are facing when they're working uh, on verifying uh, uh, surgical intervention. Mm. And we can, uh, uh, in essence, in this kind of crazy study, we're happy to do crazy study, mm -hmm. uh, we are challenging our players with the same uh, uh, type of music, same tempo, same bowing, mm -hmm. and we, in essence, uh, they go from a uh, um, professional to just uh, students and see whether uh, the students probably that, that are challenged by the, um, mm -hmm. by the piece that would be much more difficult for them are more uh, in tension and, more, uh, in a, uh, and move their body in a less efficient way. So um, if you're interested in getting involved in any of the studies that we've just talked about um, or any others, we're going to put a link in the comments section to the study finder website uh, where you can search for studies here at BC Medical Center and see how you can get involved. But um, are we going to do a test or how are we doing on time? Sure. Yeah, let's see. Do we have enough yeah. time? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So, so we're going to show. <laughs> so what we're going to do now, it's a, a very simple uh, test which uh, allows to measure and uh, you know, massive volunteer <laughs> to do the, to the test. That what we're going to do is a, what is called a bioelectrical impedance analysis, a BIA. Uh, in which uh, it's a very simple test that allows to, however, to measure uh, the amount of muscle that we have in our body, the amount of fat, and the amount of fluid. Uh, this is extremely important because when we only check our body weight, sometimes we are limited by uh, the fact that we don't understand the quality of the weight. Uh, and so we want to make sure that some of the interventions that we're, we're uh, putting in place, they're actually affecting body fat or muscle mass uh, or sometimes body fluid. And so we're... Uh, Lie down? Do it. Yes, lie down. Okay. Your life's here. It's only gonna take about 30 seconds. I'm doing it so that if you're thinking about <laughs> enrolling, so far so good. There's no pain involved. No pain involved at all. No. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> 
So about how many of these would you say you do uh, on, a, on a month? Uh, depends on the study. It, it really depends on the study. We yeah. uh, again, typically in our uh, clinical trials, we do uh, typically every four weeks. Yeah. Um, but we're now also implementing the use of the BIA in our clinical practice. So uh -huh. even in our uh, uh, outpatient nutrition clinic, we do the BIA because we want to make sure, especially for patients that do uh, weight loss interventions, right. that over time they're actually losing uh, fat mm -hmm. uh, and they're not uh, their muscle mass is not being affected. And so this is a way to monitor changes in body composition over time. Right? I think this speaks, uh, and I think this speaks to the multidisciplinary aspect of the research going on here. As right. we mentioned several times, we have you know pharmacists, as we mentioned earlier, physicians, nurses, nutritionists like Dr. Carbone, and there's engineers, and all of this allows to get a more comprehensive uh, approach to research. Cool. Okay, so now we're ready. So that basically, what we would do is just to turn the machine on and wait about 20 seconds for the results. Um, and we don't have to wait for the results, if you know. Okay. okay. Am I allowed to talk during it? No. And you can see it's very quick, it's not painful, and it gives us lots of data for the study. I think we're done. So done. the, the study is done. Um, turning the device. Any pain oh. involved in? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. And it was very easy. It was super easy. Easy study. The worst yeah. part is pulling the little tabs off. I'm tough. I can handle it. Okay. 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 All right. I think we're ready to see the rest of the unit. Yeah. So if you come on, there's something. Um, I wanted to show you the engineering room because I think that's fascinating about how the room works and what went into creating the room. So it's kind of loud. So I'll just let you go in and just kind of look around, and let people know that it's a lot of work that went into this room that um, Dr. Chen did. Yeah. Those are the uh, core instruments that measures the uh, gas concentration inside the room. So we have uh, three uh, gas analyzers, uh, one for uh, the incoming air and uh, two others for uh, each each of the other two are for the two chambers so uh, by monitor the very subtle changes in the gas concentration we can then deduce uh, how much oxygen you are consuming or how much carbon dioxide you are uh, producing um, from your breath so and then we'll head down to cardiology's rooms We'll lead the way down the hall here. Yeah, we have Joining quite an entourage here. Uh, yeah, we're oh. to introduce uh, Dr. Moeller. He's the director of the Clinical Research uh, Center, the Wright Center. So, yeah, Dr. Moeller is the director of uh, the Wright Center for Clinical and Translational Research here at VCU. And uh, the Wright Center, can you, uh, can you or, or Dr. Abate, tell us about how does the Wright Center help facilitate the clinical research that we're seeing here in the clinical research unit here at VCU and VCU Health. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things about the unit that's really helpful for research across the board is this is one of the few places really in the country where you can come to have the kind of research done that you can do here. Mm -hmm. So many academic medical schools and many institutions that have a clinical and translational science award which is, is a, an award that helps fund clinical research that can impact people's lives, mm -hmm. they don't have this kind of unit. So they can't right. do the kind of research that we can do here mm -hmm. to develop new medications, to study like the unit, use the unit over here like Dr. Chelly has with the, the, uh, the, the kinds of testing that we can do here. So, yeah. so I think that's really the, the, uh, yeah. the important thing about this. Right. And it also shows that our health system is, is so collaborative with us that we really are partners in this. Right, it sounds yes. yeah, like a very collaborative effort between VCU uh, Wright Center, which is more of an academic unit, and VCU Health yes. Clinical Research Unit, which is more, and, and this is just a beautiful example of how they work together, right? right? And we received our uh, CTSA that Dr. Moeller just mentioned uh, exactly really a year ago um, today, or this month, and that helps us perform a lot of the um, things that we're going to be talking about and uh, much, much more. <laughs> yeah. All right.
So we'll come on down. Um, the other end, the other end is more of our clinic and then the cardiology um, area where they do um, different testing. And uh, Dr. Abate's team also supports other studies that would need echocardiograms and that sort of thing. So it's collaborative and interdisciplinary um, for the studies. And then one other unique thing that we'll stop by just to say hi is that we do have a, a lab drawing station uh, and specimen collection here. So patients don't have to go anywhere else to have their study labs drawn. We'll just go right in here. And this is Kelly. Hello. She uh, manages our lab as well as our patient scheduling for the unit. And we have two phlebotomy chairs. Um, although for patient privacy, we usually, uh, we only have one patient in here at a time for privacy. But we have comfy chairs. Okay. So maybe I can take you to the uh, cardiology testing areas? Yeah. Sure, so on. we have, uh, uh, as I mentioned, there are several studies uh, aimed at testing new drugs for heart failure, and uh, um, cardiac function is also a measure for very different tests from liver disease, from addiction, to normal uh, exercise metabolism. So in this uh, room here, you can see that we have uh, our, our team members, Haley Billingsley, who's a, a nutritionist Hi. and an exercise physiologist in training, Regina Mihovic, who's an exercise physiologist, and uh, we don't, uh, we don't, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Our, our healthy okay, volunteer yes. here. <laughs> <laughs> Who is uh, um, now Quebrando, Guido Quebrando, I'm sorry, I didn't get the name. Guido is actually a research fellow in uh, cardiology and he's volunteered on, today to show the cardiopulmonary exercise testing. And if you can see, he's wearing a mask or a mouthpiece. And this mouthpiece allows to measure oxygen exchange and uh, uh, CO2 production, kind of very similar to Dr. Chelly's room. Uh -huh. In this case, we partner with uh, an exercise testing, asking to see how much oxygen is burned out during maximum exercise testing. And so we try to make patients better and able to do more on the exercise testing with different treatments and different uh, rehabilitation. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. No, that's great, yeah. In, in the next station here, this is one of our imaging uh, rooms. We have a, an echocardiography machine. We have the fiber scan. We already met Dr. So Sterling. you can see Dr. Sterling, who's going to do the fiber scan test. Eduardo, Eduardo Bressi here is Hi, nice uh, volunteering for us. He's a research fellow, a cardiologist in training. Um, and to the left of Dr. Sterling is the fiber scan. Can you tell us a little bit what is this used for? Sure. So this is a machine called a vibration-controlled transient oh, elastography. It's also known as a fiber scan machine. And, and in uh, simple terms, it basically... So get a little light on the subject. Basically mm -hmm. uh, tells me how stiff the patient's liver is. It can also tell me how much fat is in the liver. And this piece of technology has pretty much replaced off from, from work uh, and potentially have a, um, someone who drives them also take a day off from work. This is a point of care testing. We can do this in just a couple of minutes uh, and it doesn't require any medications and no needles and it's uh, turned to be a fairly accurate uh, and it, like I said it's replaced liver biopsy for most liver diseases and uh, this is also uh, for use in our, our routine clinical practice but the machine that we have here is uh, made for just research patients. Right. Can you show us an Lay example? Down. Sure. Can you scoot you up? Yep. So this is a very easy machine and go ahead and put your arm above your head and cross your, your leg over. So what we're going to do is Luckily, this machine uh, comes in two sizes, uh, regular and large, but uh, our patient here is uh, kind of a normal size. And so <laughs> what we do is this little probe here, um, I call it the thumper, and it's a special ultrasound probe that has a little attenuator that basically will generate a vibration in the liver. And then this machine then watches the vibration or the sound wave move through the liver, and you'll be able to see that here and then it uh, uses a formula to tell me how stiff the patient's liver is. And it also is able to tell me how much fat is in the liver by this uh, blue number here called the CAP, or Controlled Attenuated Parameter. And this again, as you can see, instead of the patient taking a whole day off, they can just come into the office, and again, we do this all the time. And uh, so you can I'll see get a good machine. reading. Okay. And we can see here, uh, this is the ultrasound, sort of picking up the liver. This is sort of the normal liver tissue. And basically, I'm going to give a little thump, and that gives me a number.
and you can see it's very easy. And we do 10 readings. And uh, it gives us a nice number. So Eduardo, what are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel anything like the thumping or any feeling with it? No, any feeling. It's a, like a um, pleasure. So it doesn't hurt. So it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Perfect. Mm -hmm. A little thump. Yeah. And so what we get then is we get a reading that looks pretty good. And uh, this reading shows the 6.8 is his liver stiffness, and that's a fairly normal. And the, the blue number here, 211, is the fat reading, and this time it came back as completely normal. Oh, wow. So it's not a perfect test, but it definitely uh, helps to get rid of, um, avoid having a liver biopsy. And then this is point of care. We can tell the patient right then and there. They don't have to wait for any more results. And you mentioned that this is uh, dedicated for clinical research, this yes. machine. And that's, I think, one of the great things about this unit is that we have this dedicated unit for, for clinical research. And so um, you can have these tests done for clinical trials and not kind of have to wait in line. Right. Or, so it's yeah. real time. So mm -hmm. when you schedule your appointment, you're getting all of your testing done on right. that visit. So you don't have to say, oh, well, can you come back in two weeks or a month? It's all real time and it's scheduled accordingly within your visit. What a great way to get all of this really interesting health information about yourself. Uh, oh, absolutely. It's, and it's very important because the clinical trials have very set times to do this exams. Mm. So this allows to be compliant with the protocol without having any delays. Because mm. we, we set uh, beforehand, when are we gonna measure this? So if you were doing a, a, a trial with Dr. Sterling, he may have an assessment at the beginning and then mm -hmm. one exactly at three months, mm -hmm. not just later in time. Right. So we want to be precise. Right. And we also don't have to then worry about trying to get insurance approval mm -hmm. uh, and trying to go through all the paperwork. So right. from a patient's perspective, it's very convenient uh, and they love it and obviously it's a nice room and the staff is great and they can get everything done in one visit and not have to worry about any of that. And Dr. Sterling, you've been doing research here at BCU for quite a while, right? Uh, yeah, I've been here almost 22 years. Yeah. Um, I'm probably one of the bigger users of the unit and we've been doing uh, clinical trials both sponsored by the NIH and by industry mm -hmm. uh, for over 20 years yeah. and um, for example on the hepatitis C drugs many of the drugs that you now see uh, on TV mm -hmm. it seems like lots of commercials for these new hepatitis C medications uh, that are um, just all pills um, many of those studies were done here at VCU in this unit with our patients who contributed to get those drugs uh, FDA approved. So right. we're very grateful to our patients to help do that. Yeah, that's a really good point to make. Um, by being here, you can be a part of allowing those drugs to reach so many you know, more patients and um, also kind of be a part of history, right? right? Yeah. Excellent. Very good. So this other machine we have here in the corner is an echocardiography machine. So we, we can uh, use ultrasound to look at the function of the heart, structure of function of the heart. It's very easy as well. Uh, many people would have experienced this at some point in their life. We're just going to show it to you very quickly and ask if, Eduardo if there's any pain involved. There's a little, maybe a little, bit, not, yeah. a little bit of uh, uh, the stress of the gel, but the gel is necessary to get the uh, ultrasound beans uh, through this. And so it's a lot a of times, usually, <laughs> a little cold, yeah. A lot of times we're using um, this to uh, assess what drugs do to cardiac function or cardiac relaxation. And again, it's one of the perks of being here in the clinical research unit. And your echocardiogram looks completely normal. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> And I might, you know, you point go. out just because uh, one of the big liver diseases that we're now studying is fatty liver disease. Mm -hmm. And there's clearly a relationship between fat in the liver, fat in the heart, and abnormal uh, fat function. So there's a collaboration then uh, between Dr. Abades and our hepatology group to try to particularly study that. And it's great because we're both right here. Patient can get it have everything done, we can have open discussions, uh, and it really is sort of a one-stop shop, including uh, utilizing the metabolic chamber uh, you know, for those patients. Right, and that's something that we always try to emphasize here at VCU, that we have so much interdisciplinary collaboration. We talk about a lot with uh, our academics, but it's also on the clinical side. You know, different specialty physicians, nurses, clinical providers are talking on a daily basis and working right. together. Right. So those relationships really help the patient. Definitely. Yes.
Yes, and then one thing that's also very important to our patients, of course, is infection prevention. So all of these pieces of equipment are cleaned after each and every use according to the manufacturer's guidelines. So Eduardo had his test, so then we would come in, clean the equipment, and get the room cleaned and ready for the next patient. All right, so, so as we um, head out for the day, you finished your appointment, so to speak. Um, we have um, some members of our team here getting um, some tests on our patient that you met that was in the exam room, but we'd love for you guys to come back. We have some big things on the horizon um, for us, specifically getting renovated. We'd like to expand our space, give more clinical rooms for providers, as well as uh, break up the room. So hepatology has their fiber scan, ECHO has um, their own room, so that way patients can go in between the yeah. rooms. And so that's happening over the next year, so we'd love for you to come back and visit us, because we know we're growing and expanding day by day here. Yeah, yeah and I think, and you already said, you're gonna share the, um, the contact the link to Study Finder. Yes. Uh, I think that, you know, we, all of us, all uh, potential patients like myself, should be aware that uh, being in a study can be a unique opportunity and for tr finding a new treatment for yourself or helping find a treatment for the humanity. And uh, all these studies are all vetted by our institutional review board and they're all carefully monitored. And so this is a very safe environment where you can look for the, the treatment of today and of the future. Yeah, be a part of the, of the, of the medical breakthroughs of tomorrow. Right? Nice. Um, so we are going to add a link to a study finder. We're also gonna add a link to a animated video that um, shows how clinical research benefits you. I uh, thank you so much, Dr. Abate thank and you. Joni for joining no us, all, everyone thank who you. is here today to um, thank you. show um, all of the really great technology and um, interesting equipment that we have here on the clinical research unit here at BCU Medical Center. Um, happy International Clinical Trials Day in advance and um, we hope to hear, see you here soon.